Welcome everyone. In the previous chapter, we studied the junction field effect transistor and then we studied the two types of MOSFET, the depletion type MOSFET and enhancement type MOSFET. In this chapter, we are going to perform the DC analysis of these transistors. So we are going to perform the DC analysis of the FET in this chapter. And again, we know that there are two approaches to DC biasing. One is the graphical approach and the other is mathematical approach. Now, if you remember in case of the junction, of, in case of the bipolar junction transistor, the output current was related to the input current by beta. That is the output current was equal to the beta times the IB, where this d beta was an amplification factor. And if you can have a look, we have a linear relation between output and input variable. Here we have a linear relationship between output and input variable. Because of this linear relationship, mathematical approach was more common. Mathematical approach was more, was more common. And other equations was the current IB was approximately equal to the zero ampere. And other equations used was the, the input voltage VB was for the silicon transistor was 0 0.7 volt. Now in case of the FET, in case of FET, again, we know that FET is a voltage control resistor and the output current which is the drain current is again the function of an input voltage VGS but now the relation between output and input is non-linear. In case of in case of JFET and DMOSFET in case of JFET and DMOSFET the relation is given by Shockley equation which is given as ID is equal to IDSS 1 minus VGS divided by VP whole square. And in case of enhancement MOSFET, that is the E MOSFET, again we have again a non linear relationship which is given by ID is equal to KVGS minus VT whole square, where VT is the threshold voltage. Again we have square term here and we have square term here. So here we have a non linear relationship. Non linear relationship. So though we will use both type, both mathematical and graphical approach, but here the graphical approach is more common. Why the graphical approach is more common? Because we have a non-linear relation over here. So in case of the FAT, the graphical approach is more common. And other equations uh, that we need to remember in case of the FAT is that we can say because of the high input impedance of the FAT and because of low power consumption, we say that the gate current is approximately equal to the zero ampere, which also means that the drain current is approximately equal to the source current. So the drain and source current are equal and the gate current is equal to zero ampere. And for the JFET and DMOSFET, the current ID can be found by Shockley equation for E MOSFET, the current ID can be found by this equation. Our first configuration is the fixed bias configuration. And you can see the fixed bias configuration on your screen. We have the N channel junction field effect transistor over here. And we have two coupling capacitors C1 and C2. So C1 and C2 are my coupling capacitors. C1 and C2 are coupling capacitors and we know that the reactance uh, of the capacitors is given by 1 by 2 pi fc so now because the frequency of dc is equal to 0 so xc is equal to infinity xc is equal to infinity that is why these cap uh, coupling capacitors will be open circuit so open uh, open circuited. So this will be open circuit and this will also be open circuit. So this branch is going to be separated from here and this branch is going to be separated from here. Vi is my input voltage and V naught is my output voltage. 
Other thing is that both these terminals are connected to ground, so I can combine them together and con con and get a common ground. Now this is my gate, and we know that the current flowing through the gate is almost equal to zero ampere. Because the current flowing through the gate is zero ampere, so the current that is flowing here, because this is open circuited, so no current flows here, and all the current that is flowing here is going to flow over here. So here the IG current flows, which is zero ampere. So the voltage drop across this RG is zero volt. So we can also short circuit this uh, this terminal. So it means this is going to be our short circuit. So now when I simplify it, we will have arrangement like this. Now to the inner loop, let me apply the KVL. When I apply the KVL, I will have minus VGG minus VGS is equal to zero volt. And this means that VGS is equal to minus VGG volt minus VGG. So this is my one of the equations and it shows and that is why we have the fixed bias over here because the input voltage VGS is equal to minus VGG which is some fixed bias. And again the drain current is given by the Shockley equation because we have a Jeffet over here that is why the drain current is given by the Shockley equation which is ID is equal to IDSS 1 minus VGS divided by VP whole square. So the drain current is going to be given by this Shockley equation. And now we have this output circuit. And this output circuit can be redraw as for example I have this VDD which is some positive voltage and then I have the RD, ID, this is my RD and then again I have the VDS which is some drop, this is VDS. So now I am going to apply the KVL to this circuit where the current here is the ID. So when I apply the KVL let this be the VDD and this is positive to negative. So this is my voltage rise and the others are my voltage drop. So let me draw, let me label the voltage rise as minus VDD and let me take drops as positive. So minus VDD plus IDR the plus VDS is equal to zero volt and this is the equation for the output circuit. When I simplify this I get VDS is equal to VDD minus IDRD. So now this is my equation of the output circuit. Let me call it as equation 3. The other thing is that because the source is grounded so I have Vs is equal to 0 volt. Because the source is grounded so the source voltage is equal to 0. This implies that the voltage Vds which equals to Vd minus Vs before because source is grounded Vs 0 so Vds is equal to Vd. Similarly for the voltage VGS which equals to VG minus VS it equals to VG because again the source is grounded. So we have this important equation, uh, this important equation and finally this equation which is VGS is equal to VG. So this was the mathematical approach for the fixed bias configuration. Next is the graphical approach of finding the quotient R operating point. So again in graphical approach we know that the drain current is determined by the Shockley equation which is given by ID is equal to IDSS 1 minus VGS divided by VP whole square. And we know from the shorthand methods that we have four important points and in fact to further speed up our process we can only use three important points. For the VGS is equal to 0 volt, ID is equal to IDSS and when the VGS is equal to VP, ID is equal to 0 ampere. And another point is that when VGS is equal to half VP or 0 0.5 VP, we have ID, this is VP, we have ID is equal to IDSS divided by 4. So based on these three points, I can quickly draw the transfer characteristic graph. 
and here we go we have taken these three points and quickly drawn the transfer characteristic curve now the next thing we need to do is to use the equation and the equation that we need to use is the vgs is equal to minus vgg minus vgg so we are going to simply draw a vertical line at the vgs is equal to minus vgg because this x axis is my vgs and y axis is my d so at the point when the vgs is equal to minus vgg i am going to draw a vertical line over here and we are going to see over here here we go we have drawn a vertical line over here that is equal to the minus vgg so the fixed level of vgs has been superimposed as a vertical line at vgs is equal to minus vgg let me write over here the fixed level the fixed level of vgs has been superimposed has been superimposed as a vertical line is a vertical line at vgs is equal to minus vgg so this is a vertical line and the point where the two curves where the transfer characteristic curve and the vgs is equal to minus vgg curves intersect that is the common solution to this configuration that is referred to as the q point or the quotient point or the operating point so this is how we can find the graphical solution and you can have a look in fixed wise configuration both mathematical and graphical solution was very easy to find but in the coming configurations you will be see that the graphical approach will be more common because of the non linear behavior graphical approach will be more common because of non linear behavior linear behavior now we will do example 7.1 and we have been given idss which is 10 milli ampere and vp which is minus 8 volt we have also been given the vgg which is 2 volt so now we need to find the vgsq the drain current idq vds vd vg and vs so first of all the VGSQ we know that the VGSQ was equal to minus VGG and minus VGG the VGG is 2 volts so this is this is going to be minus 2 volt so the VGSQ is my minus 2 volt second is the ID the drain current and the drain current is again given by the Shockley equation which is IDSS 1 minus VGS divided by VP whole square now the IDSS is 10 milliampere as given the VGSS VGS is going to be the VGG which is minus 2 volt and VP is again given which is minus 8 volt. So we are going to substitute this 1 minus minus 2 divided by uh, the minus 8 whole square. So when I solve this my answer comes out to be the 5.625 milliampere. So this is my IDQ and I have also found the IDQ the drain current which is the IDQ third, third is my VDS and again we if you remember VDS was equal to VDD minus IDRD so now I have found I the ID which was which is this value and the VDD is given which is this is my VDD which is 16 volt so I'm going to put in values so this is going to be minus 16 minus into this ID which is 5.625 milliampere into RD and RD is my 2 kilo ohm so this is my RD which is 2 kilo ohm so I'm going to plug these values and this comes out to be 4.75 volt so my VDS is equal to the 4.75 volt. Next is the VD. Now we know that VDS is equal to VD minus VS and VS is equal to 0 volt because the source is grounded. So which implies that VDS is equal to VD. Which implies that 
Vd is equal to R sub 4.75 volt. So this is also done and then we have E which is Vgs. Again Vgs is equal to Vg minus Vs because Vs is 0 so again we will have Vgs is equal to Vg and which is equal to the minus 2 volt as we found here. This Vgg or Vg here he has called it as Vg. So that is why this is our minus 2 volt. And finally Vs because Vs is grounded so that will be 0 volt. So now we have found all the six quantities and here the method that we applied was the mathematical approach. Mathematical approach. Now for graphical approach again we are going to quickly uh, draw the transfer characteristic curve and then superimpose the VGS is equal to minus VGZ as a vertical line on this transfer characteristic curve and again our common or intersecting point is going to be our Q point and because on Y axis I have the ID so the point that responds on Y axis is going to be my IDQ which comes out to be the 5.6 milli ampere and again we have already imposed it so the minus VGG is also known. So the VGSQ has been known now from this which is minus 2 volt and IDQ has been known by superimposing this vertical line on this transfer characteristic curve and and uh, and finding the uh, common point on the y axis which comes out to be the 5.6 milliampere so now this is my 5.6 milliampere and again to find the vds we have again vds is equal to vdd minus idrd so again I am going to put this ID, I have already RD known in the previous graph which was 2 ki in the previous picture which was 2 kilo ohm and VDD was 16 volt. So now when I put values I get VDS is equal to the 4.8 volt. So now VDS is also known. Now again VDS is equal to VD minus VS where VS is 0 volt so VDS is equal to VD or VD is equal to VDS which is again 4.8 volt. Similarly for VG, VGS is equal to VG minus VS and again VS is 0 volt because the source is grounded. So VGS is equal to VG which is again minus 2 volt and again VS is 0 volt. So in graphical solution all we need to do is to draw the transfer characteristic curve and then superimpose the VGS is equal to minus VGG on this transfer characteristic curve and then find the intersecting point. That intersecting point is going to be my Q point or quotient point and from that I can find the current, the, uh, the quotient drain current and from quotient drain current I can find other values very quickly. So this was the graphical approach.